Jeez. I'm beginning to think I might have been wrong today on Laser Nug. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I was wrong, I'll admit it. About eight, eight and a half months ago, a few months after I got my first laser, which is a Thunder Laser Bolt, I tried for hours testing to get a great effect or a nice engrave on glass. And you folks may remember that video. I came to the conclusion that a CO2 laser just does not do a very good job. Too many fractures, too much cracking. No matter what I tried, so many different types of glasses, I couldn't get a good effect. And then recently, I talked to an individual that's got a CO2 laser and he suggested that I try a different approach. And well, he was absolutely right. Based on the reference material I've read from different types of laser manufacturers as well as other videos that I've seen, I think a UV laser will still do a better job and you're certainly not going to get the highest quality which you would get if you were sandblasting the glass. But I have to admit, this engrave is probably two to three hundred percent better than what I was ever able to achieve before. So I'm going to share my settings with you today. I've already engraved with a one and a half inch lens on different types of glasses out of my kitchen cabinet, of course. And today I'm going to do it again, but with the two and a half inch lens, because I know that a lot of you with the Thunder Laser Bolt have a two and a half and not a one and a half. And we'll see what the results are. Let's do it. You're going to need your paper mask, more properly called paper transfer tape. I use a brand from Presto Tape. I get it from Sign Supply here in Canada. You're going to need your little squeegee. You're going to want a scrubby pad, just the same one you use in the kitchen. Not too abrasive, but it's got a little bit of a rough texture to it. You're going to need that afterwards. And I'm going to use the same type of glass mug that I used with the one and a half so we can compare afterwards. So although you may remember from that earlier video, I spent hours, as I often do, trying to get settings for a specific material, in this case, glass. And if you recall from that video, I had mentioned to you that early on, I actually cracked one of the glasses while I was trying to engrave it. And I think where I went wrong is I assumed that meant that my power was way too high. It actually wasn't my power that was the problem, it turns out. It was my speed was too low. And you'll see here with these new settings that we're using a very high speed and a much higher power setting than I was using before. The two and a half inch lens is in. I've already set up and I've aligned my pie burn grip. Let's jump into the computer. Here in Lightburn, I'm gonna use the exact same design I used on the first mug and in the exact same size. So I'm just gonna grab it. I'm gonna spin it for the rotary. I wanna come up to my rotary settings, make sure I have the correct diameter for that mug. And I do, it's 3.18 inches in diameter. And remember folks, when you're dealing with your rotary, you wanna to go to at least two decimal places, preferably three. Let's check, I'm enabled. It's on the A axis. It's telling me it's reading it successfully. And I have 30,000 steps per rotation, which is correct for the Pyburn Grip 2 on this Thunderbolt. We're good here. Let me share my settings with you. We're going to be using 1,000 millimeters per second, 60% max and min power, high air. You need your air on. It's in fill mode, and we want 1,016 lines per inch, one pass. This is, I believe, where I went wrong about eight months ago. I was doing my testing around 500 millimeters per second, and that's when I cracked one of the glasses, if you recall, and then I assumed I needed to start dropping my power settings. And in fact, what I should have done is increased my speed and then started to play with my power, which is what we've done here. We're gonna click OK. I'm looking good. I'm just gonna take a check. Yep, looks all well. And I'm gonna make sure that my user origin is here, which is where I like it when I'm engraving on a rotary. And we're gonna send that to the bolt. And this is what I've learned makes a big difference for your engrave, your paper mask. I'm just gonna grab a piece. We're gonna wrap our glass. I'm not exactly sure why, but this mask is a must have. You'll get a completely different result if you attempt to engrave without the mask. 
I'm going to put my mug in with the handle pointing downward. Let's tighten her up. Okay, I believe we're good. Let me just check it. Yep, lots of clearance. The mug is square. Excellent. I'm just going to slide my wheels back here. And I just want to raise that up a little bit. I think we're good. Yep. We're just going to check our alignment. Now that we're aligned, we're going to auto focus. Okay, we're going to set our origin. Let me frame it. Okay, we're good to go. The engrave is done. I'm just going to peel off this mask. I'm going to grab my scrubby pad. I'm going to head into the kitchen with some dish soap. I'm going to wash up this cup and then we'll take a look at the results. First, let's look at the one I did with the one and a half inch lens. That's this guy. Hopefully you guys can see that all right. I should have cleaned the glass <laughs> and cleaned the other one. This one's a little bit hazy, but that's your engrave with the one and a half. And this one was the one we did today with the two and a half. They're very close. I'm thinking the one and a half is better with those settings. But let's take a look under the magnifying glass. Here's the one and a half. Let me turn off this light. Might be better. Okay, let's take a look at the two and a half. Okay. Well, at least from what I'm able to see, let me just turn off the light. It looks to me that the one and a half does a slightly better job. Yeah, for sure. Let me just look one more time. Yeah, I would have to say it's the one and a half so far. It's much, much more of a frost, like a clean, consistent engrave very little mini or micro fractures that you can see and it's very consistent and I think just a little more consistent than our two and a half. Last test. 
I've already had my coffee, but I want to put something dark in behind it so we can see it better. There's your one and a half. Yeah, that looks much, much better than the two and a half. Just put the coke into the two and a half. And there's the two and a half. Yeah, I would have to say the two and a half leaves more little micro fractures or cracks, so to speak, than the one and a half. The one and a half is a much cleaner engrave, for sure. Well, you let me know what you think. Well, definitely far better results than I was able to get eight months ago. I think the mask makes a big difference as well as the speed. Uh, clearly it does. It certainly is not, as I said, the same level or quality of an engrave you're going to get with sandblasting. And from what I can see, a UV will still apparently produce a much better result. But this is definitely, with the one and a half inch lens, I would sell that engrave. That's a pretty nice engrave. As always, I appreciate you sticking around with me. I hope it was informative or helpful. And for those of you that watched that video eight months ago, I apologize. I guess one thing I have learned through this exercise is there's so much a laser can do and there's a big learning curve. And just when you start to think you're getting the hang of it, you get that curveball, and you realize that there's so much more to consider. If you've got a few spare glasses in the cupboard in the kitchen, give it a shot. Make sure you throw some paper mask on there. If you don't have it, uh, if you've got regular masking tape, give that a shot. And by all means, please let me know in the comments how your test results turned out. If you've got a bolt, try that one and a half inch lens. And if you don't, perhaps the two and a half can do better with adjustments to those settings. Have a great week. Please be kind to each other. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.